On from Ian Dark and Jim Watt, and we welcome our MC, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come for the WBO Featherweight Championship of the World. Prepare to welcome the boxers as they make their way to the ring. First, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the challenger from Manchester, England, Michael Brody. A fourth and surely last chance to become a world champion for the deserving 31-year-old Michael Brody. He's been a British, European, and Commonwealth title holder in his career. He's been in some tremendous fights. He's gone very close. He's been unlucky as well. And now, 14 months since he was destroyed by Injun Chi in their second fight, he gets what for some is a bit of a surprise chance to dethrone Scott Harrison. Can Brody take that chance, or has it come too late? Well, whatever happens in the evening, this young man does not know what the fight game anything. The courage and commitment he has shown over the years has been incredible. He's given so much of himself. We just have to ask, what does he have left to give? Does he have, have enough? This has to be his final throw. What does he have left? That's what this fight is all about. And now, making his way to the ring, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the defending champion from Glasgow, Scotland, Scott Harrison. Well, he's got a band of supporters here in Manchester, but this is his first World Championship fight away from the Brayhead Arena near Glasgow. A tough, grim, determined champion, Harrison, who's lost this title in the past to Manuel Medina, but won it back from him in fairly heroic fashion. Lucky to hold on to the title, most of us thought last time against Victor Polo, but for most featherweights, he's too big, too strong, too hungry. criticism too well and they've suffered a lot of criticism after his last fight they believe they're very unlucky to hang on to his title so I'm sure he will have a point to prove tonight and I'm sure he's here to do exactly that is the uh, tail of the tape for this fight tonight a battle of Britain fight an Anglo-Scottish battle to pep it up a little bit Brody's four years older 31 getting on a bit that is for a featherweight Harrison's a bit taller has a slight reach advantage both bang on the nine stone limit though Brody had to strip off naked to make the weight and he's a former super phantom as well Brody's been a pro for a couple of years longer he's had four fights Harrison's the one with the world title pedigree. Brody with a slightly higher stoppage ratio. The bookies make Harrison a pretty warm favourite. Ladies and gentlemen live and exclusive across the UK on Sky Sports Friday fight night we welcome you to the MEN arena here in Manchester England as we present the featured bout of the evening and it's all brought to you by Frank Warren Sports Network as sponsored by Parliament Vodka and Three. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the World Boxing Organization, the President Francisco Balcarcel, the supervisor, former world champion Istvan Kovacs, along with the British Boxing Board of Control, and the steward in charge is Jeff Bolter. Introducing to you our three judges, scoring this bout from ringside, from Wolverhampton, England, John Coyle, from Kent, England, we have Roy Francis, and from Edmonton, England, David Paris. Our referee in charge of the bout, he is working in this his 124th world title bout, Mickey Van. All right, fans, here we go with our main 
main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Featherweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance, and boxing fans joining us around the world, from Manchester, England, it's showtime! Introducing to you first, ladies and gentlemen, the challenger. He is on my left, fighting out of the red corner. Entering the ring, wearing white trunks with red and blue trim. He weighed in at nine stone even for the featherweight limit of 126 U.S. pounds. His record, 35 wins, two losses, one draw, with 23 wins coming by way of knockout. He is the British the Commonwealth and the European welterweight champion tonight challenging for the title. Please welcome, rank the WBO number five featherweight contender from Manchester, England, Michael Brody. And his opponent across the ring is the defending world champion on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks with gold trim. He weighed in at nine stone even, 126 U.S. pounds. His record, 23 wins, two losses, two draws, with 13 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the two-time WBO featherweight champion of the world, known as the real McCoy, introducing Scott Harrison. Once again, our referee in charge, Mickey Van, now to give instructions. 12 rounds of world championship boxing coming your way. Okay, Scott. In the dressing room, don't forget what I told you. I want no noise with the head. Shake hands, buddy corners. Good luck, fellas. Scott Harrison always looks as if he's just been told some extremely harrowing news. All business has developed a marauding style. Brody, who can be a very nice technician, but the question with him is is he damaged goods at this late stage of his career and after some very tough fights since he moved up to featherweight? Black Trunks, Scott Harrison, defending his WBO featherweight championship in England for the first time. And in front of Brody's supporters, who've been pretty vociferous. Good atmosphere in the arena now, at the start of this fantastic weekend of boxing in Manchester. Brody gets into the nice, short little left hook. He thinks he might have too many skills for Harrison. Harrison's come, think they'll get to him, and they get there with a the left hand there. One or two stories, alarming stories from the early work in the gym for Brody, where he rather fell apart, got better since then, apparently. Well, fairly obvious there, uh, Harrison's tactics, he wants to bully and bulldoze uh, Brody straight away, and already Brody's defences have let him down a couple times, just let him down again, that's the second full-blooded left hook he's taken. This is an excellent start for Scott Harrison, fight the officer for Brody. Harrison looking to jump on Brody early on here. Rounds his head back with the jab. Brody a bit too easy to hit. And Harrison, who's a big, big featherweight, will use his size and his strength here against a man who used to be a super phantom. Well, Brody at his best does have the power to trouble Harrison, but he's been pushed back. His balance doesn't look quite right. I think he's been shaken with those couple of left hooks. So he's really on the defensive here. Not a good start for Brody. Looking to make a statement as well, I think. Scott Harrison got a lot of criticism last time when most people thought he was beaten by Victor Polo, the Colombian southpaw. Good shot to the body there from Brody on that occasion. Who has to try and roll back the years a little bit here for that time when he was a very good European champion. Another shot right there, Brody's gone there, did a silly dance after that right from Harrison and knows that he's got him going and comes back. But Brody finds a great right hand in the middle of all that. What an opening round here. Harrison looking to nail Brody in the opening session. Firing in head punches, not much coming back from Brody. He's been brave here, almost quite like it on his ticket. Now he takes it back. Harrison, this is grandstand stuff in the opening stanza. 
Oh, huge right from Harrison. Bruni takes that shot somehow. He's been on the brink a couple of times in this opening round, but he's fired back Brody somehow. Well, these are full-blooded shots Brody's taking. I cannot believe he's still standing. I've seen him coming back from the situation like this in the past, but how often can he do this? Back he comes again. Fantastic heart from Brody, but this is a lot of punishment very early on, and his legs look unsteady. They do. They really do. And when the legs are gone, there's no real power in your own punches. So hard in your foot. What a what an opening round! Whoa. Even punching after the bell. And they're still wanting to carry on even then. After all that, as well. I tell you what, I think Brody stung Harrison a couple of times too in the middle of that. Yes, Brody does have the power to hurt Harrison, but his balance was gone. He was so badly stunned. What can they do with him in the corner here? I mean, these were full-blooded shots. That was a beauty. Caught him a little bit high, but you can see the effect in the legs. He was all over the place. You would not imagine he would survive the round. You would not imagine he would keep upright throughout the, the three minutes here, but he did. These were kind of arm punches now coming from Harris. He's not a massive one-punch hitter. He should have stepped back and given himself a little bit of room, but obviously the occasion got to him, and he started pouring arm punches on. But after that, other full-blooded shots landed bang on the target, and I do not know what kept Michael Brody on his feet. That's the end of the round. They still wanted to keep fighting. And here's the start of the next one, and they'll still want to carry on fighting. Mickey Van, rule of law from him. Just do it like I say, he says. No sillies with fighting after the bow. Back they go to work again. Little uppercut on the inside. Brody's still capable of these glass shots. Wants to take the chance at the fourth time of asking of becoming a world champion. He was robbed in his first world title fight against Willie Horry. Rob line. look at this again. Harrison doesn't mind taking him on in this kind of toe-to-toe -to -toe battle. He thinks he's stronger at the weight. And he might well be right about that too. Brody, good body shot. And the left hook as well to end it. Well, Brody's defences are bad to his as well, just moving right in and having a tear up here because if he backs off, he's been pinned. So he's as well trying to get his own punches off here. Now the right hand goes in. Brody has had some very, very tough fights. The one with Pastor Moore in, the two with Injun G, which were absolutely strength sapping affairs, which age a fighter. He's having to take quite a lot early on here, but he's having successes as well, with quite quick hands as well. And Harrison, in some of his recent fights for me, has rather forgotten all the boxing skills he used to have earlier on in his career. He's relied almost exclusively on his strength and the fact that he's big at the weight. Well, most of Harrison's fights, he's got by on strength and condition. He's such a big natural featherweight, and I think he sees this to the answer to anything Brody's got. But Brody's still in there, he's, he's still getting caught the solid shots. He's getting himself into the fight that little bit now. A couple of nice jabs from Harrison just walked up to. Very little head movement from Harrison. I'm sure he'd pay for that if he met the elite guys in the division over in America. Brody trying the body there. Yep, Brody coming back now. This is unbelievable. Tremendous action so far. It really is. They just want to stand and trade, and Brody's quite happy to do that as well. Here he is drinking in somewhere beyond the last chance saloon, I'd say. But Harrison just looks so much stronger. He's been caught as he comes in but he's walking right through everything that Brody throws. Brody gets there with a the right hand. He's finding Harrison pretty easy to catch himself and might be encouraged by that. And digging deep and whips in a couple of left hooks, another one to the body. Good stuff from Brody in this round. This is more even. He's actually pushing Harrison back at this stage. Who would have thought this? making for tremendous action but are these the right tactics for Brody can he do this with this big nine stone up over a 12 round fight something's got to give here it hasn't yet oh they leer at each other at the end of this round
straight shots, keep it simple, bam, bam. Well, I know the Michael straight Brody shot. can One, two, feel three. that if this fight had been two years ago, Brody would have won it easily. But it, I mean, it's great action, but are these smart tactics by Brody? They're not smart thinks? tactics, but I don't think it's about tactics. I think it was dragged into this war straight away, and he's just having to stand there and suck it up. And here's round three, Black Trunks defending champion Scott Harrison who would be in anybody's list of the top five featherweights in the world at the moment. <laughs> top class, rip-roaring, all British World Championship fight this. Brody, great left hook to the body, and then he follows it with one to the head as well. Back comes Harrison again. It's a toe-to-toe -to -toe slugfest, to use the phrase that the Americans like to use this. Well, Brody has been in so many more fights like this than Harrison. Harrison, usually if someone trades with him, he's too strong for them. But Brody's been here so often in the past, it's unbelievable. He can still do it. Just beginning to swell up a little bit, Brody's face. It does tend to do that a little bit. He's going to the body of Harrison. He's looking to take some of that strength away from him. Harrison, who's prepared up on Ben Nevis, carrying big sacks up the mountain. Well, Brody has turned around in this round. He's looking the more impressive. The jab's working, the body shots are working. Just a little edge in hand speed. And maybe technical skills too from Brody, which is helping him too. Just trying to pick the punches a little more sharply. Not going to hit so much. Dicks in another left hook to the body. The jab is working so well. Harrison is walking way up hand into his right hand. What a turnaround here. He's outboxing Harrison just for the moment. Harrison clubs him back with a right hand. This is a going spell here for Brody. He can sometimes have lulls in fights. No lull here, all right. Well, Harrison has never been difficult to catch. And Brody has really found the target in this round. Good body shot again from Brody. He's made that a target. Another left hook to the head. There were two of them, in fact. effort so far this from Michael Brody who's meeting Scott Harrison's fire with plenty of his own digging in these body shots again Harrison was hurt a couple of times against Polo to the body nobody likes it down there who'll be the first to wilt in this white heat of battle Jam again, working for Brody. What a good round for Michael Brody. Well, he's looked superb. He's always had plenty of class. Drew his first fight with the indestructible Korean in Jin Chi. Lost the second one emphatically. But he's putting up a heck of a performance here so far. He's walking in we are watching a magnificent fight here for the WBO featherweight championship between Scott Harrison and Michael Brody. Well, Brody was the one showing the class in the third round. The jab was working, the body shots were bang on. He was sinking them in. You can see that there, doubling up to the head. What a wonderful fight! And here comes round four of it. First time that Harrison's boxed in this city for four years to beat Gary Thornhill in a British Championship fight. Harrison might need to use some of his old boxing skills that we saw so much of in the early part of his career when he was beating former world champions like Tracy Harris, Patterson, Tom Johnson. Oh, body shot! Oh, body shot! has got him! Left hand! Brody doubles up in pain from that he was hurt by one right at the end of the previous round. Six, Count seven, seven. Eight. eight. He's not going to get up. Looks in oh, bad no. shape. He's in bad shape. Shape time doing it. He stopped. It is all over. And suddenly, with a body shot, Scott Harrison has won the fight. The end came quickly, and a body punch did it. All over in round four. It was exactly the round, by the way, that Brett Maloney, the manager of Scott Harrison, predicted before the fight. The fourth round. 
You know, Brody was hurt by one right on the bell in the previous round. Went back to the corner, just went in a little bit. And I think that one might have caught him in the same place, you know. Yeah, well, that was a real second there. I mean, Brody was the man with the reputation as the big body puncher, but nobody likes it down there. And you always say, I think if a fight goes into the trenches, then you can't ask any more than what this man Scott Harris can give. He's so strong, he's so powerful at featherweight, and I think that was just the difference, but what a superb effort for Michael Brody. We've probably seen the last of him now. But as I said earlier, he does not owe the fight game anything. He's given everything, but this man was just a little bit too strong, and in the end, a little bit too good for him. Well, Michael Brody's had an honourable career, and if that is the last chapter of it, it was quite a last chapter. He was superb for a while in the fight, but this was the end. That shot, left hook to the body. Oh, knocked everything out of him. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's amazing that Brody could bring himself back from the head punches he took in the first round. You would have expected the head punches to be what finished the fight, but in the end, it was the body shot, and it was a beauty. You can see at this stage, halfway through the count, you could see he was struggling, he was trying to get the pain out of there, he was trying to get his breath back, but he just couldn't recover from it. But what a tremendous world championship fight we have just witnessed. There were only four rounds of it, but there were some four rounds, and Scott Harrison has done it again some way, somehow he always finds a way to get the job done. Brody could not beat the count. I'm not sure entirely that he really wanted to there. He got up at sort of nine and a half, didn't he? It was a, it was one of those shots, Jim, that just knocks everything out of yeah, the fight. He, he had nothing left. There was pointless getting up there. The, the pain was still there. He couldn't get his breath back. He did the right thing. Reminded me a bit of the shot with which Bernard Hopkins beat Oscar De La Hoya. Yeah, I've, I've got, I think that was a better shot. That, I, I think that particular shot, if De La Hoya had still been in the fight, he may have found a way back up. But I don't think there was any way for Brody to get himself back into the fight after that shot. Michael Brody was asking before the fight, who has Scott Harrison beaten in his career? Well, he holds victories, by the way, over six world champions. Tom Johnson, Tracy Harris, Patterson, uh, Julio Pablo Chacon, Steve Robinson, Ray McCullough and Manuel Medina. Now he's beaten Brody, who's destined, like Harold Graham, like Dave Charnley years ago, to be a very good British fighter who never did become a world champion. Harrison wins a memorable battle here in Manchester. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time, 46 seconds in round number four. A referee in charge, Mickey Van, reaches the count of ten. He is the winner by way of knockout and still the WBO featherweight champion of the world, the real McCoy, Scott Harrison. And ladies and gentlemen, how about a hand of recognition for a fine effort here tonight to the challenger, Michael Brody. What a part Michael Brody has played in the Manchester boxing boom over the last decade or so, even when defeats at world level have been his again and again. Some of the younger brigade from these parts get their chance on this big show tonight. Still ahead, Michael Jennings, the unbeaten young welterweight. He's in action against Gavin Down. At light middleweight, Thomas McDonough of Manchester against Barry Lee. That's another England-Scotland one there. And Hatton, Matthew, younger brother, in action on this warm-up before the big one tomorrow night against the Frenchman Adnan Hadoui. I say warm-up, but the two in our top of the bill here tonight have done the show proud. And in his own way, Scott Harrison's done his title proud. He retains, keeps winning. He's with Adam Smith. Scott Harrison, you keep hold of that world featherweight title after a thrilling encounter with Michael Brody. Does that rank amongst your most satisfying wins? Uh, well, well, every fight uh, means a lot to me. This is the defence of my, my title. Uh, big respect to Michael Brody, he put up some fight there. Uh, right for the very first, first round, it was, it was turning into a bit of a brawl. 
And I respect him 100%. Uh, what you read in the papers, it didn't come for, for my mouth anyway. Did you draw him in, though, to your type of affair? Yeah, it, was a, it was a brilliant fight, but he was trying to overcrowd us and work the body, work the body. But I think it was uh, the third or fourth round. I caught him high here, and I could see him, he was hurt. Then after that, I was just attacking the body after the jab, but try to keep a bit of distance in between the two, you know what I mean? Plenty of needle in the build-up. It's a fight long in the making, but I'm sure you've got a lot of respect for Michael Brody now. I, I respect Michael Brody as well. You know, a lot of things that happen in the papers, it's just all hype. You know, it's the self fights, and uh, I respect the guy 100%. You know, and I'm happy to be here doing battle Manchester, and the, the fans have been fantastic, and I just wish Ricky, Ricky Hatton all the best of water. We're full team right behind them. That's nice of you, Scott. It's been a difficult time for you, especially after the Victor Polo fight last time. Did you feel that you needed a performance to uh, reignite the fire? Sometimes we don't uh, train right, you know, performances are not 100%. In the last fight, I had a lot of things happening and uh, had a roller coaster there a year. As you, as you know, you know, there's a lot of things happening. And uh, that was the first time I've been on Fort William, running the mountains for a year since the Medina fight. So once I train, once I train right in the mountains, you see performances like that. Scott Harrison back to his best. Back to the mountains again. So I've had a couple of weeks off in the back. Back to where it's cold again. <laughs> no, up and off it's gone. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'll, I'll fight ending the planet. I'll just leave up to this man here. Well done tonight, Scott. An audition, really, for Harrison with American TV interest in Manchester, of course, this weekend. Thoughts of Barry and Johnny on his career possibilities from here when we come back. More on the build up to the big one. Hatton Sue, of course. And our next action Michael Jennings at welterweight against Gavin Down. The whole country's talking about it, and it's almost upon us now. Hatton against Sue, and you can take your part in the build-up too. We want your views on the big one. You can text the keyword BOX and your message to 84401. Texts cost 25 pence. Network charges may vary. Michael Brody, a fourth time bid to win a world title. Scott Harrison, looking to show he was back to his best and he needed to be at his sharpest to repel a brilliant Brody effort here. Harrison retains his WBO World Featherweight title. For a while, it looked like it might be a close run thing, Barry. But has he shown in prevailing that he is back to his best? Yeah, I don't think we're ever going to see technical genius from Scott Harrison. He's a bru brutal, marauding, powerful, strong fighter. He, he started off brilliantly. He was in great, uh, you know, he was doing great at the beginning. But I, I thought Brody fought magnificently. Came back, I thought he won the second and the third rounds. But then he walked on that. Tear from. The brave loser, yet again, with Craig Slater. Well, commiserations, Michael. It was a terrific fight while it lasted, but in the end, was Scott Harrison just a bit too big, a bit too strong for you? Just got caught, mate. Not about being strong, you know what I mean? He just got caught, you know. He set time out the ring, and that's what happens. Better fight than the night. That's the end of me, you know, you know what I mean? Finished. End of it. You confirm you're going to retire from boxing yeah, now? Yeah, mate. I've had a, you know, I've had a good career, and I've done well. You know, I fought the best, never ducked anyone. Scott Bart's good. Could good that, fighter. Could good that not be a bit premature? I mean, you seem to have him hurt once or twice during the fight. Yeah, I know, but you know what I mean, mate? I've, I've had a long career and I think it's time now. I mean, I'm up here. Jack's up here. Yeah. My yeah. trainer's up here. So, it's the end of me. Were those the wrong tactics you employed tonight to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Harrison from the beginning? No, nah, it, was, it was the right tactics, you know what I mean? In the, in the first round or second round, I, I got to him, didn't I? You know, could have had him, but on my night, you know, he's just a better kid on the night. Good luck to him. Good luck in the future, Scott, you know what I mean? Just finally, is it very upsetting you've come so close to a world title and not quite made it? How can you say not made it? I was the IBO champion, do you know what I mean? And the WBF. I've made yeah, it, in my eyes, I've made it, you know what I mean? I've, I've made it. So, I've had my best shots, you know what I mean? And I've had a bit of time out. I thought I was good enough, come back, you know what I mean? And it's not happened. So what I wasn't going to do, nice. Get out of it and, you know, watch my kid grow. Well, Michael, you've given us very many happy memories. Thanks very much. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Yes, and it will be.